Hey everyone, Tom Ye West here. We started talking this new story before we kind of looked deeper into it, but we found that out during this podcast and we quickly corrected ourselves to discuss what this means for Scream 6. So while it may start off with some news about the Alamo Draft House leaking and things like that, we dive a little deeper and try to uncover what the hell is really going on with Scream 6 and its synopsis. So please don't jump on the comment section and be like, oh, you guys are talking about something that's outdated because we realized that halfway through the podcast, correct course and discuss exactly what we think might be happening. So enjoy the episode and yeah, remember, we fixed it. Trying to be more serious in these podcasts, man. And I don't know how that's going to go. Because I'm trying to keep our laugh, like our silly shit and our conversational shit for when we do our conversational podcast. So I'm trying to be more serious, but I never get through to like three minutes without fucking just turning it into a shit show. So let's get, <laughs> let's get this shit show on the road, I guess. Here we go. Alanis, do you like scary movies? No. Oh, I guess I'll hang up then. <laughs> I'm Ghostface, so, do, Alanis, do you like scary movies? Yes. What's your favourite scary movie, man? Uh, Anal Busters 5. That is a, that is a fucking scary one, man. <laughs> a, a gaping buttholes <laughs> that I have seen in that will cause nightmares. By the way, I don't even know if this is a real thing. Is this a real title for a movie? I assume so. I mean, it'll have to be. We're Googling that later. What is it again? Anal Busters 5. Wait, fuck it. We're Googling that shit now. I told you. What would happen? It's already off the rails. It's already gone to shit. Google um, ball, ball Busters? Anal Busters. Anal Busters. Fucking hell. Why am I having so much trouble like comprehending this fucking simple as fuck title? Anal Busters what? Five. Five. Ah, uh, wait. Oh, mate, you were very close, man. We've got ass busters, <laughs> butt busters, black ass blasters. <laughs> <laughs> black ass blasters. Be a racist, Google. All right, let's get on with our show. We are here today to talk about Having Scream 6 ruined, pretty much, like, the, the plot served up to us a fucking silver platter. That's what we're talking about today on Pop Logs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pop Vultures. I am your host, Tommy A. West, and joining me as always is my co-host, Alanis Anal Busting Maximus. Yeah, no. I, I got the title right, yeah, did I? I think so. Okay, good. That's, that's what I changed to with both deaths and marriages, so. Yeah. And by the way, I fucking forgot that when we just changed our names legally, by the way. So I introduced us as our old names because I wanted everyone to like realize that, you know, we know who we were. Yeah. And like, we just, we need to introduce you to the proper way. I'm Tommy A. West and this is Alanis Anal Buster Maximus or whatever he wanted to be this day. And we changed our names. And down the bottom, you can now see our pre new presented names. And my name is Reptar Jenkins alongside Sausage Mahone. Your name's so much cooler than mine. <laughs> really disappointed in myself for that, mate. You know? I was just trying oh. to pick some 90s flair, Reptar from Rugrats, with Jenkins. Jenkins is a fine last name. That's what I mean. But maybe I could have gone for something cooler from the 90s. I don't know. Earl the Dinosaur from Dinosaurs? I don't know. <laughs> that, show is, that show is awesome, man. That show ended really depressingly, but good. I've never seen the end of it. How did it end? Spoilers! The, the uh, they, yeah, they all die, pretty much. Really? Yeah. So, they 
took like kind of like a kid's slash family sitcom and instead of giving them sort of a happy ending where we maybe not got to see the earth destroyed when the dinosaurs were around and maybe ended before those tragic events, you know, um, yeah. just expose the kids to all their favorite TV characters in this show fucking perishing in the end of the world, you know. Like, it doesn't actually show them died, but it's implied. So, I mean, little, little kids probably wouldn't get it, but... See, I understood. I understood that that was what they were, like, leading to with this show because the very first episode opens up with, like, a news report of them talking about how an asteroid is on its way to the Earth or whatever. It's, I don't know, something. And they're all like, eh, don't worry about it. You know what I mean? And there's, like, a volcano in the back that's, like, kind of erupting all the time and it gets worse and worse and worse. And I was like, I know that's what they're leading to. So... But, like, I know they cancelled the show after one season because it was way too expensive to keep making, which I don't understand why they thought it would be a fucking good idea to make it in the first place if they couldn't keep going after one season. But that's kind of sad to know that they ended up using that ending so quickly, like, after the cancel. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 12 episodes with these characters, you got to kind of love them and get to grow with them and shit. But you know what? Asteroid. So, anyway, let's get on with the topic at hand. We are not here to discuss 90s flair, including Reptar or Dinosaurs, which, by the way, go check those shows out. I mean, come on. The Last, <laughs> the last of Us ain't got shit on Dinosaurs. That's all I'm saying. That's great. Last of Us is just fine. And to anyone that thinks the last week episode was bashing the show because of the sexuality issue, you need to recheck our episode because we made it quite fair and made you realize that we definitely weren't attacking it from that angle. We couldn't give a fuck about the sexual orientation or whatever or the sexual choices. We went on strictly feeling like it was a filler episode. So go check that out and tell us why you might disagree. But definitely don't come in there and tell us we're gay bashing because I'm telling you right now, you do that, I'm just going to hit you back with something really silly like, how you going, cat? Cat, cat man. <laughs> I had nothing, man. <laughs> I had nothing prepared. I had nothing prepared, but I'll hit you back with something better. So, anyway, Alanis, did you see what the Alamo Draft House did? Yes, I indeedly did. Why? Before we get into <laughs> it, just I want to ask you when you write a synopsis for a movie, first of all, when I learned, when I learned in film school, they're not called a synopsis. They are called a log line. That's what this, the writers of the, the movie make. A log line. A log line should be 27 to 28 words, maximum 32 at most, about what the movie's going to be. And those words should be very, very quick to tell you what you're going to watch and make it very clear what you're going to watch, but also not tell you enough that it spoils the movie for you. So let's look at it like this. Pineapple Express. I don't know how well I'm going to do this on the spot because of the 28 words limit thing, but let's just like kind of put it in how you'd write something like that. Uh, Two stoner buddies... Uh, one one, st- one one stoner by the name of Blah, Evan or whatever, no, uh, witnesses a murder and has to go to his dealer to find out what is going on and a night of, uh, a, a week of whatever ensues. Will they clear their names or will they blah, blah, blah? You know what I mean? Like that's just like sort of a very cut and dry example of what how you do a structure. You know what I mean? Of a sort of, very yeah. shitty, very shitty log line. I'm not trying to say it was good, but Scream Six's log line, but not log line synopsis, written by someone who clearly wasn't involved in actually making the movie, wrote this log line for the movie at the for the Alamo Draft House, which if for people in Australia watching in other countries might not know, it's an American cinema chain. I don't think there's many of them. From what I know, I think there might be like four or something in the whole of America, like one in San Francisco or I don't know how big they are. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe there's fucking hundreds of them. I have no idea. But all I know is it's like a 
premier way to view movies. So it's like you get the recliners. It's like our like gold class, yeah, Linus. But it's like they bring you meals, like they usher it to you. You order off a menu. You can drink wine. It's really comfortable. Like the Alamo Draft House is a big pick for a lot of people. Like because cinema chains don't work like they do here in Australia, where we've got like the big chain. Like you know, you've seen it on Seinfeld when they go see movies at New York, and it's just like they're playing at the theatre down the street, and it's just like like. That's kind of how cinema works in America, you know? So the Alamo Draft House is kind of its own thing. And they put a synopsis up for Scream 6. And I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to read it. But I'm going to give everybody this fair warning to back out right now. Because we have been completely fucked over with this log line. And I don't know who approved this. I don't know... If Paramount Pictures are going to be happy about this because, Alanis, how did Scream start in 2022? With Ghostface saying, don't spoil shit. And it'll probably happen again. A face of Ghostface came up, the face of him, right? At, like, a zoomed in face. And he's like, do you know the number one rule of seeing a scary movie? Do not spoil this movie for anybody. Do not tell anybody anything about this movie because we saw it on opening day now look i don't know how if that was a part of like they had to show that before every session the whole time it aired like or that it was like in cinemas like i think that might have just been for the really early showings i don't know but the whole point of these movies is to literally have know as little as possible now i'm going to bring up i don't have it on screen i only have it on my phone now I'm going to read it to everybody. Maybe I'll bring it up in the edit or something like that because I have a screenshot of it. Um, as the survivors of the recent attack of Woodsboro travel to New York City for college, Tara, our final girl, begins to ex experience manic psychological breakdowns while seeing the ghosts of past killers. Meanwhile, her sister Sam attempts to manipulate her by pretending to be Ghostface. But when their plan goes wrong, Three new masked killers appear on the scene, leaving the question of who will survive and who will be the final victim left to be answered. Ah. This is them with the microphone. <laughs> Al 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 Alanis, what do you take from this log one? I want you to pick the parts out that you think spoil this three killers they're doing a whole like that at that point they're kind of like uh who is it the door again paramount paramount have, have kept this kind of under wraps so they've got this whole this whole shtick they're saying like there's they're kind of showing off there's a bunch they've got people thinking they had us thinking before this is this like a cult is this one killer is this two killers is it a charles manson vibe no, we know it isn't now because of those bastards. What else? There's lots in this. Uh, See, eliminating the sister as a killer, giving away part of the plot that she's pretending to be the killer. And the breakdowns and seeing the ghosts of past killers. I think we have our answer to a lot of questions we had for this movie, which is, are we going to get Stu Marker back? 100%. Because who's she going to be seeing ghost visions of? Look, they're going to see, she's going to see more ghosts of the killers. Like, we, we know she's already, wait, is it Tara seeing it or is it Sam? So Tara, our final girl, gets to, so now Tara's having the visions. Was it always Tara? Because Sam was the one having the visions, yeah? I think so. Or was I think you're right. It's Sam that has the visions, surely. And she goes yeah. ballistic at the end because that's right, because her sister's like got a broken leg or whatever in the fucking cupboard or whatever, you remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like she's the one that kills like dude, like Billy Loomis is like and like fucking <laughs> he finds the knife and stabs that dude to death. So it says she's seeing visions of past killers, not killer, which means to me, Stu, everyone wants him back. 
I'm guessing Jill. We're going to see Jill. Um, I don't think we're going to see Roman. What do you think about that? I don't think we will. I don't think they want to acknowledge that. They wouldn't want to, man. They really wouldn't want to acknowledge that. Um, I'm going through this as well. Um, okay, another thing. Do you go see a screen movie to see who lives or dies? Or do you go to see a screen movie to find out who the ghost face killer is? Pretty much to see who the ghost face killer is. Exactly. So why are you putting it at the end here that we're supposed to, but their plans go wrong and three new mass killers appear on the scene, leaving the question of who will survive and who will be the final victim left. We don't give a fuck who the final victim is left. Really? Like, we're not all that attached to these characters yet, considering a lot of them have only been in one fucking movie. So for you to think that that's what we want to <laughs> go and be, like, on the edge of our seat of it, is Tara going to make it? Is Sam going to? Oh, my God. We barely know them yet. Like, you need at least another. Like, okay, it would be different if it was Nev Campbell. That's a different story. If it was like a legacy character, yeah? We've only got one legacy character or two in this that we can see. Gail Weathers, Kirby. Um, Kirby, I heard, is in it very little. Gail Weathers is a staple in it. So really, we're only getting one legacy character from what we know, right? That's from what we've been told. Now, the problem is I don't think Gail's going to die because we've already gone over this. They spoiled Dewey's murder in the last trailer. They're not going to do it again for Gail because it's too on the nose then. Now people are, like, expecting that to happen. You know what I mean? So it's like I don't think they're going to do that for a second time. I have very good faith that Gail's making this out of life, yeah? So yeah. the character we are meant to care about, we don't care. You know what I mean? Like, how do you feel about that? I agree, and I think it's a, a terrible. They they. I'm surprised if this if they still allow this to be up there. Like, there can't be an approved giveaway that's happened to you. Let's check the site. <laughs> Hold on, man. I'm trying. Look, look at this, right? So, this is their site. Look, look how look how functional this shit is. And then look, look. So, what do I want to see? Look down here, right at the bottom. You can see now playing. It's backwards, but it says now playing. So I want to scroll upwards. Hey, fix your site, LMO Draft House. You know, you fucking. Dumb. <laughs> not only can you not write a synopsis for Scream and understand the premise behind Scream and not fuck it up for the audience, but you can't even get your website to work. I tell you, things are driving me crazy at the moment, bro. I don't know. I've been extra touchy lately. And when the moment I found out that people think Britney Spears is a clone, I had to. <laughs> I nearly, I nearly wanted, I literally just right then and there wanted to set fire to everything on the planet. I was like, fuck this. I am out. You dumb, you idiot. I'm sorry. Just a moment here to just quickly say, if you believe that Britney Spears is a clone and they've killed Britney Spears and it's a cover-up, I'm looking right at the camera so you know this. You are a fucking simp. <laughs> Straight up. This is a Jurassic Park. She's a human being, not a velociraptor. End of story. Sorry, got that out of my system. I'm just trying to find this fucking movie still, man. We can't, I can't see anything on it. Here we go. It's been changed. Really? Let's read the updated Alamo Draft House synopsis. Following the latest Ghostface killings, the four survivors leave Woodsboro behind and start a fresh chapter. In Scream 6, Melissa Barrera, Sam Carpenter, Jasmine Savoy-Brown, Mindy Meeks, Martin, 
Mason Gooding, Chad Meeks Martin, and Jenna Ortega, Tara Carpenter, Hayden Penetration, uh, Kirby Reed, and Courtney Cox, Gail Weathers, return to their roles in the franchise alongside Jack Champion, Henry says Liana, and it goes through a bunch of names. So. So they got a lot of feedback about this. Wait, wait, wait. Now there's word going around that this is, this was put up by someone at the LMO draft house as a joke. Or something Mm. along those lines. What do we believe here? That, could that be could that be hype started to backpedal on a stupid synopsis though? Well, this question. What did we learn with Halloween ends? That sometimes these things are accurate. And what did we learn about how they try to backtrack with Halloween ends? That that's exactly what they do. They go, no, 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 no that's wrong. And Let's read when this was put up. Hold on. Uh, was it... Where was it put up? Like, that's what I want to find out. If it was put up on the website and how long it was up for before it was taken down with a new plot and then them saying, proof to be false or whatever. <laughs> like, because that'll determine if this is real or not. You know what I mean? Like, how was it put... Like, so how did it spread? Was it actually on the site or not? I need to... We need to find out about this, man, because we cannot... Put it out if it's fucking completely false. I'll need to like put a disclaimer at the start and be like, listen, we talked about it and we looked at it and we're like, oh, now it's changed. So we could be completely hitting out a video here that has no point, but <laughs> we'll see. Give me a second. Ah, now this is some interesting. Reddit. I'm on Reddit right now. Now, see that red little tag? Underneath the sort of title thing that you can see like right there. That says, sorry, this post has been removed by the moderators of Scream. Now, <laughs> if it says official synopsis screen, Alamo Draft House, real. Spoilers. Sorry, this post has been removed by moderators of Scream. Now, why would you remove? A post if it was false like if it wasn't giving away anything you know what i mean like if it was causing no harm if it was just a joke why would you remove it then from a reddit post like reddit it isn't exa- reddit isn't exactly like people like you can't even spread fucking fake news here man like you can't dude it's reddit you can say what you want on reddit you know what i mean like um let's have a look Quick, a little more uh, into this quickly. We've been receiving a lot of back and forth news about what to expect from the upcoming Scream 6. After Alamo Draft House's latest synopsis reveal was debunked, there's been a bit of confusion when it comes to how the film will play out. And while the incorrect plot description promised an even more psychological driven horror film, directors Tyler Gillett and Matt Bettelini Olfen, whatever your fucking name is, are promising audiences that they'll start getting. So they'll still get a bolder, more brazen go face than ever before. Um, okay. One thing I want to point out about that written, which is weird. Even though they hinted in the fake synopsis at a more psychological thriller thing, the directors didn't say, no, that's not the case. They said, but don't worry, you're going to still get more ghost face of doing this and this. You know what I mean? So that doesn't... That already tells me they haven't backed out of this, yeah? Um, but that this is... I still think there's weight to this. What do you think? I think there's a chance, especially seeing that they're pulling it down off Reddit, things like that. They're not wanting people to see it. So During an interview with Games Radar, the filmmaking duo revealed that they had already mapped out where they would see the revamped story go, should last year's screen be a success at the box office. As we know, the feature killed at the box office, which quickly greenlit the now soon to be released follow up. Because they were able to see things from a broader perspective, Gillett said to the team, the team was able to mold Scream, whoop, Scream 5 into uh, Scream 6 to confidently be what it is. Like the films that have come before, 6 will take off 
like it's on rocket fuel from the opening scene to the closing credits. You sit down, it starts, and the movie being just a ride. Um, I'm trying to find more. Uh, while the original crew left Woodsboro twice before for the Ohio in Scream, for Ohio in Scream Two and Los Angeles in Scream Three, the backdrop of the Big Apple proved to be a chaotic killing ground for the next Ghostface. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know what to believe anymore. Wild Six Scream Six information from Alamo who draft house taken down. Now this is what I want to find out. Because if it was actually on the Alamo Draft House page, I fully believe that this is real. If yes. it was a, someone like sharing a screenshot of the Alamo Draft House where they had like stream listed with that synopsis and then block out the synopsis, like whiting it out and then root their own. You know what I mean? Like I could see someone doing something like that, but that's yeah. what I'm trying to find out right now. So let's read this. An unofficial screen de description supports some of the interesting Ghostface theories and Paramount provides the official version. An intriguing Scream 6 synopsis was unveiled by a theatre chain that includes multiple potential reveals, except we know it wasn't an actual synopsis for the movie. A direct sequel to 2022 Scream and 6 overall installment in the Slasher franchise, Scream 6, follows the survivors of the latest Ghostface thing, blah, blah, blah. Um... The returning cast is led by blah, 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 blah. Um, Alamo Draft House, per Alamo Draft House website, which has since been updated to remove this unofficial and mysterious info, the Scream 6 description previously published by, the te by them begins by referring to Jaina Ortega's Tara as the new final girl and reveals that her sister Sam will pretend to be Ghostface. Alamo's website also claimed there will be a total of three Ghostface killers in the sequel. This is Paramount. Paramount labels Alamo's info as unofficial as theater chain removes it from site. And this is official. Their state. This is Paramount Pictures' statement. Following the publication of this article, Paramount Pictures reached out and stated Alamo Draft House's six scream six information published was misleading and not official. The official synopsis is uh, uh, delivered below. Um, the original article contained. Continues below with edits for clarification and removal of Alamo's original description. So, I think while it has been pulled, while people are saying it's been proven to be false or debunked, I have a bad feeling about this, Alanis. I think, yeah. I think this has uh, been a big fuck up on someone's behalf. I don't know how, because. I don't even know if cinemas would have it yet. Like, so I don't know who at Alamo Draft House wrote this synopsis. Maybe they wrote it without knowing exactly what the movie's going to be about and just guess their way through it. That could be another option. But, like, come on, man. That was very specific. Yeah. They had to have information <laughs> from somewhere. What do you think? I agree. Um, maybe. Has there been sneak previews of this movie? Has it been. Another thing we'll have to quickly Google. Uh, dude, you know what? This is a this is really good that we're doing all this though, because we're finding out, I think, like information that I don't think is getting much YouTube talk. And if it is, people are just kind of accepting this oh, it's been debunked thing. You know what I mean? We're uh, we're quicker yeah. off the press than Batman who's been got stabbed by Ghostface. Yeah. No! <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go well. <laughs> um, oh, bro. I'm dying here. <coughs> Never make me do that again. Um, all right. <laughs> so, Scream 6 cast. Uh, everything we know about Scream 6. Uh, Scream 6 screening teaser and info. Um, trying to find if it's had any pre-screamings, because we'd heard about the Halloween ones. Uh, hold on, I'll go to news. Uh, 
Why Kirby actually makes a lot of sense as Ghostface. No, nope, we're not looking at that. One of these characters is Ghostface in Scream 6. No shit. It's like a picture of everyone. Their headline is, one of these characters is Ghostface in Scream 6. And it's a picture of everyone in the movie. <laughs> um, no shit. Uh, Scream 6 tease could make Randy's death even worse. Okay. First, Billy, now Scream may have bought another ghost face, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, I can't see anything on it at the moment. I think what we found uh, is probably the most updated news that we could come across, which is that it was, in fact, published by the Alamo Draft House. It was, in fact, removed by the Alamo Draft House by the request looks like by paramount and if it wasn't by paramount and it was simply just them going no we got to change this i don't think that's what happened I, i'm guessing that paramount reached out and we're like you change this shit and we're backpedaling we're going we're telling everyone this is not the case because i'm telling you bro if we get there and all this plays out exactly like it did in this fucking synopsis i'm going to be really pissed off and i will probably <laughs> And I hope you're listening to this Alamo Draft House because you know what? This is the first time I'm going to do this. I'm going to hashtag and at you guys in our fucking post because I'm going to talk some shit on you here. And I think you deserve it because you can't put up false plots like this if it is indeed false and think that it's okay. Second of all, you can't spoil movies for people that this does intend to be real. A movie especially like this the whole premise of it is to not have it spoiled. <laughs> so if it turns out to be true, Alamo Draft House, I am going to fucking make so many videos on you guys. I am going to mention you every podcast. And I'm going to make a running joke out of it. I'm going to be like, don't go to that fucking cunt of a place, Alamo Draft House, because <laughs> you want you want your movie spoiled for you? you. You could go there and the fucking guy that's like rips your tickets or whatever could be like by the way in this movie uh this person dies and uh, like you you i don't understand why you would do this second of all, i don't understand if it was a false one why you would put it up that makes you look really bad especially when you're a proper reputable cinema chain like what are you doing putting up a fake one like so there's a couple of things i'm concerned here is it real the story maybe if it isn't why was it put up that's pretty fucking unprofessional and also not fair to people that are going to see this movie. You know what I mean? Like, even if it is fake, like you don't do this to people. You know what I mean? Like just, I don't even know what to say about it, man, because it's like, what, what happened? You know, like what the fuck yeah. happened here? Anyways. Assholes happened. I think that we did a good d detective work on this and I, yeah, I think it deserved us to do this time, you know, um, because we, I think we found out what we needed to find out. And I think that me and you have cracked the case again, just like we did with Halloween ends. And you know what? How much shit did we get for spoiling Halloween ends and people didn't believe that we were right? We had a lot. We had a lot of people being like, you guys aren't correct. This is all clearly done to push us away from what's really yeah, going to happen. Well, you're speaking old news, and this isn't correct. And, this is clearly a push from the sin the company to make you go in that direction. So when you go into the movie, you're going to be thrown because it's going to throw you in a different direction. And we went in that movie, and guess what? It threw us exactly into the pit it was aiming for. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking the Lazarus pit. Instead, didn't bring us alive. It fucking made us have movies spoiled for us all the time. You know what I mean? All right. <laughs> Let's wrap this sucker up before I fucking end up ringing up the Alamo Draft House and uh, putting in a bomb threat. <laughs> the Alamo Art Draft House? Do you like bomby movies? Because <laughs> something explosive is about to happen. <laughs> They're just like, uh, guys, there's some creep on the... And I don't know why, but my, their phone is still working and it's just like hanging and you hear my voice, yeah, my, like you hear me in the background, like on the phone, like through the handset going, ah, 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 ah. 
Ah, 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 ah. Alamo Draft House. Anyway, Alana, I think that was a good yeah. detective work. I think we found out a lot, and I think people are delusional if they think there's no truth to this synopsis. And you know what? If we find out there is no truth to it, guess I'm the delusional motherfucker, and I owe you guys an apology. So we'll, that'll come if it is necessary. <laughs> Until then, fuck you all. <laughs> Lance, anything else you want to say about this before we head out? Uh, fuck you, Al Molly, draft house. Yeah, I'm pretty certain you ruined it. So whatever. Guess we'll go see Sorry. what we know what is going to happen. Hey, Alanis. I wonder yes. how many ghost faces there are going to be in this movie. Apparently three. I wonder if um, Tara is going to start seeing visions of um, previous killers. Probably. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder um, how, how Samantha, Samantha, Samantha is going to be pretending to be ghost face. <laughs> and um just keeps going man and have matthew lillard's back because she's seen the past killers <laughs> all right guys thank you for tuning in to another kooky episode i'm telling you guys we promised that we start out with the best intentions to do a serious episode and it last today it proved to last not even i think 30 seconds before the intro credits, we fell off the rails. That's good, though, man. You know what? I want us to be known for that. <laughs> Everyone's just like, hello, everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Scream. Now, look, I don't know if this is real or not, but Alamo Draft House just put this up, and then I'll bring the thing up next to him, and it'll like, have the thing, and he'll be like, I just can't believe that they did this. Like, oh, no, no, no. Me and you were just like, Fuck you, Elmo Draft House. We're calling in a bomb threat. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, what, that's what we bring to YouTube. And I love it because we're the country YouTube. We're the people that don't give a fuck. Let me tell you. Mm. Anyways, I have been Reptar Jenkins. Joining me as always has been Sausage Mahoney. Hey. Remember, those are our legal names now. So if you <laughs> see us out in the public, please. Mr. Jenkins, Reptar, they're fine. Sausage, Mr. Mahoney, Mr. Sausage, Mahoney, Mr. Sausage. They're fine. You mentioned Tommy and Alanis. And we'll send para, we'll send the Alamo Draft House over there to ruin every movie for you for the next 10 years. <laughs> right in rush hour four, uh, Jackie Chan climbs up some bamboo and swings around it and kick some people in the head, and Chris Tucker goes, damn! <laughs> in the new Friday movie, Chris Tucker's back, and he's smoking weed with Ice Cube, and they see the new Devo of the neighborhood, and they go, damn! <laughs> Every movie is just Chris Tucker going, damn! <laughs> in the new Money Talks movie with Chris Tucker, um, there's a scene where he gets lots of money that talks, and he goes, Damn! <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get the fuck out of here. Yes. <laughs>